the basic triple play service equipment rack. In this equipment rack, uh, mainly three elements are there. Uh, first element is one G-Pond OLT. Uh, then next is one L3 manageable switch and one uh, cache server. In this G-Pond OLT, uh, there are eight G-Pond ports for connecting towards customer end. Each port can having capacity around 128 connections. So totally 1024 connections can hold by this OLT. There are six uplink ports. Uh, totally eight uplink ports. In that six uplink ports are 1G uplink ports and two uh, 10G uplink ports are there. Okay, currently we are connecting one uplink, direct uplink from BSNL side. The, in that uplink we are having uh, internet and um, voice FTTH voice of uh, uh, VLANs then uh, in this scenario uh, there is no direct connectivity available from IPTV head and server to this particular location we take we made an uh, alternate arrangement that is actually we taken a internet connection 100 Mbps internet connection uh, in this location and it is connected to a VPN router and that VPN router it is connected to the cache server Now uh, we will discuss the typical architecture of FTTH based triple play service for a TIP or an LCO in BSNL exchange. As we discussed earlier, for the voice and data part we have two main components, the GPON OLT and the L3 manageable switch. For the third component that is IPTV, we are introducing the cache server. All these three components will be installed in a single rack or cabinet in the equipment room. On the uplink side, the OLT is connected via BSNL media to the MPLS cloud as well as the NGN core which will connect the OLT and the customers to the internet. For the IPTV service, we should also have an IPTV head end provider whose server will be connected to BSNL MPLS cloud in a PE router NIB via a dark fiber. In our case, the IPTV head end provider is available in Ernakulam and they would be connected to NIB Ernakulam which is the PE router location and the IPTV provider will be installing a cache server also in that particular location. The MPLS team will then provide a VRF or VLAN for the IPTV services and thus all the three VLANs that is data, voice and IPTV are available in the TIP location. The interesting point is once the IPTV provider is provided with their VLAN the same will be available for access everywhere in P router locations in India. The NIB teams all over India can extend the IPTV VLAN to any TIP serving in their area. Thus the three VLANs are available in the port of the L3 switch. The data and voice VLANs will be switched to the OLT uplink port and the IPTV VLAN will be switched to the cache server by the switch. In most cases, the cache server would have a 1 Gbps port in the uplink side towards the BSNL MPLS and a 10 Gbps port in the downlink side towards the OLT, the reason for which will be explained later on this narration. On the downward or downlink side of OLT, we have the main OFC connected to the downlink pawn ports. It will then pass through joints, couplers, splitters, spur root OFC etc. before reaching the ONT in the customer premise which will then be connected to various equipment like Wi-Fi router, IP phone, TV, mobile, etc. In ONT, all the, three all the three VLANs will be available as three virtual interfaces, which will be routed to the corresponding IPs by virtue of the routing functionality of the ONT. This completes the downlink side of the exchange equipment of the TIP. In the original dual play setup of data and voice, the request for data will originate from the laptop or mobile or any other device and the phone call will be originating from the IP phone or ordinary phone, both of which will reach the ONT and the same reaches the OLT through the outdoor network and it will further be transmitted towards the MPLS using the data or voice VLAN via the BSNL uplink port. The voice calls will be transmitted towards the respective FTTH landline NGN core. Now we will see the traffic flow of IPTV requests from the customer. We will start from the customer side. Customer will be having a smart TV or a combination of non-smart TV with smart TV box. Smart TV box like Android, Apple, other platforms like Chromecast, Firestick etc are available. 
When the TV is switched on, it will request its home channel, say Asianet. Asianet is a popular Malayalam channel in Kerala. The channel request will originate from the TV to the Wi-Fi router to the ONT and the ONT will route the request tagged with IPTV VLAN through the outdoor network to reach the OLT pawn port. The OLT will route the IPTV VLAN to the cache server through the 10G port. Thus the customer side request reaches the cache server. The cache server will request the channel free from the IPTV head end which is connected to the BSNL MPLS. The MPLS edge server where the IPTV head end is connected routes the channel feed Asianet in this case to the cache server which in turn processes the feed and feeds the customer via the 10G port downstream and the first customer starts watch watching Asianet. Now if a second and third customer request channels like Star Sports or NDTV the same thing will happen and they also will start watching their requested channels. Now in this particular case, we have three channels, Asianet, Star Sports and NDTV cached in the cache server. Now if a fourth customer is asking for Asianet again, the customer request will reach the cache server, but the cache server won't be asking for Asianet feed from the MPLS, as it has already got Asianet feed cached in it. Same with the case of other channel requests from other customers. So even if there are some 300 customers watching TV simultaneously at a time, and they are watching some 30 different channels, the traffic in the uplink of the cache server would only be the bandwidth of those 30 concurrent unique channels. But in the downlink side, the cache server would be feeding the channel feeds to the 300 customers as per the request of those customers. That is the reason why there is a 1 Gbps port in the uplink side and 10 Gbps port in the downlink side of the cache server.